few of you wanted me to switch out the fans on the Frost Commander 140 to see what might happen. Well, let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. If you end up liking this video, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it really does help a lot. Also, if you really like my channel and all the testing I do, then please consider becoming a patron. Doing so will give me more freedom to make videos like this one. Now, if you haven't seen my full review of the Thermalright Frost Commander 140, you might want to check that out. I'll have it linked along the top and down in the description. But simply put, I thought it was a great CPU cooler at a great price. So before going any further, I wanted to be very clear. I do not recommend anyone buying a CPU cooler with the intentions of switching out the stock fans. Doing so is pretty much just a waste of money, either for the heatsink or on the fans. What I'm doing here is more of just messing around to see what might happen. Now, what I've done is run eight sets of tests using my 150 watt CPU cooler test and also taken the DBA of those eight sets of tests. First, I ran both the stock fans to compare it against my original testing. Then I tested just the D14X. Then I tested just the C12 Pro. Once those were done, I tested the Thermalright B12 Extreme, the Arctic P14 PWM, then two Arctic P12 PWM PSTs. And finally, I tested the Noctua A15 in both dual and single fan configurations. However, because of the odd shape of the A15, I did have to rotate the fans to get them to fit on the Frost Commander. So something to keep in mind when looking at the chart. Now, before getting onto the chart, just so everyone's on the same page, you do have to remember DB is logarithmic. So the higher the number, the more difference there is between those numbers. So the difference between 35 to 36 is less than the difference between 43 and 44. Clear as mud, good. So starting off with the new full speed stock test, it does match up with my original full speed stock test that I did a few weeks ago. Now going from the bottom up, just the C12 Pro had the CPU temperature at 77.3C with a DBA of 40.5. A single A15 had the CPU's average temperature at 77.2C with a DBA of 38.4. The Arctic P14 had a similar CPU temperature, that being 77.1C, but the DBA was only 34.7. When using two Arctic P12s, the average CPU temperature was at 75.9C with a DBA of 34.3. Then with just the D14X, the average CPU temperature was at 75.4C, but the DBA was at 43.4. The two A15s had the average CPU temperature at 75.3 with a DBA of 38. And finally, the beast that is the B12 Extreme or Extreme had the average CPU temperature at 73.7C but with a massive DBA of 47.7. So what did we learn from these tests? We learned that the stock fans are all in all pretty good when used together with higher wattage loads. Yes, the two Arctic P12s did have a lower DBA and lower temperature when compared to the stock fans at 35 dBA, but you do need to keep in mind that the stock fans are running at only 65% in the 35 dBA test, and the two Arctic P12s are running at max speed, which is probably not ideal for the life of the fan or fans. The Noctua fans didn't really do as well as I thought they should, and that's mainly because they weren't designed for this cooler, so the way they hook on is different. So I actually had to then rotate them to get them to fit. And that's likely why the DBA was so odd. Now, yes, I did adjust the alignment between the dual fans and single fan configuration, but again, the A15 wasn't designed to fit on anything other than a Noctua cooler, so I kind of had to fudge things a little bit. And that is why I wanted to test them to hopefully show that not all fans can or should be used on something that they're not designed for. Now getting back to the testing as a whole, was it possible to get a better or lower CPU temperature for the Frost Commander 140? Yes, but it will likely come at some sort of cost. 
likely more noise or a higher minimum temperature. Now for anyone wanting to switch out the stock fans on their CPU cooler, there is something to keep in mind, and that is the overall heat capacity of the cooler and fans. And what I mean by that is if you have an oversized CPU cooler relative to your CPU and workload, not much is going to likely change by switching out the fans. But if you have a low end heat sink with low end fans, switching out the fans might help a lot or might not change anything at all. It all depends on the overall heat capacity of the heat sink and fans together. There's always going to be a weak link of some sort. It depends on how large of a link that is. So what you're really looking for is to have a balanced CPU cooler. And I guess that's all I have to say for now. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. You can also support the channel directly via Patreon. A link is in the description. There is also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you have to do is agree to the server rules and you get access to all the charts that I have in my videos. You might want to uh, check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.